What, what a beautiful, 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 beautiful worship time, amen? amen. Wow. wow. Just, Just to be swept, swept away, to feel the love of Christ, Christ how much he loves us, us how much he cares for us. You can, can only, only picture the holes in his hands, in his feet, in his brow, and all the times that his skin was ripped open for us. I, I, I just, just that's, that's love that surpasses anything we know. How, how he, he would, would sit there and take that, that for you and I, knowing who, who we are in our ways. I was thinking about, about the Passover will be coming up. up. And it, it has been, been said that, that when they would roast the, the lamb, they would roast the lamb like on a cross. They would open it up like this and they would put it over a fire and let it seep. That, that I have read, read that in one of the Jewish, Jewish not saying that's the way it was done, but that's what I read. It was all representing Christ, who he was as the Passover lamb. Knowing, knowing that, that he was going to go and be tortured for you and I. It's quite, it's quite an amazing thing, thing to know what kind of deep love that is. That deep love we should have for one another, that deep love we should have for him. You know, you know, I was thinking, thinking man, Lord, Lord, I wish I, wish I loved, loved you as much as you love me. I mean, it spoke, spoke to me so hard. hard. If, if I could just have that little bit of love that you loved me, what, what kind of a different person would I be? It would be amazing. Because we all kind of run in our own little flesh sometimes, sometimes most, most of the time. time. But, but it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to know, know that he loves us no matter what. what. You know, you know I, 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 I read things, things once in a while and it sticks in my mind. Sometimes, sometimes I, I wish it wouldn't, wouldn't and sometimes I wish it does. does. I, read I read this this week, week and some of you might have read it. It spoke to me in a different way, way and I'm not speaking about hell today, but it was about hell. And hell, hell needs to be preached on a little bit more, I believe, because it is a place of torment. It is, it is where the worm dieth not. It is where they will be gnashing teeth. And there is torment there. It is a place that you don't want to end up at. It is not a great place. I read where it says there is no air in hell. Because God is the breath of life. It also said there is no peace in hell. Because God is the prince of peace. You think about that. There, there is, is no, no light, light in hell, hell because, because God, God is called light. There, there is, is no comfort in hell because, because he is called the comforter. You, you think, think about hell, how it will be without love, without peace, without light, without holiness, because God's not there. See, we have a way of not, not going, going there, there. And, that and that way is called Jesus Christ. We, we have accepted him into our lives, we have given him our, our lives, so we don't have to go to that place. Now that's, that's not why I serve him. him. I serve him because of his love for me and what he has done for me. But sometimes we need to open our eyes, there is a hell and there are people going to hell. But when you think about that, there is no air in hell because God is the breath of life. That opened my eyes when I saw that. You know, you know, we, we just, just know it's a place, place of torment. And then, then I was thinking of that rich man, man as, as he saw in hell, he had eyes, as he spoke, as he felt, and he, he said, Abraham, Abraham just, just take, take one, one drop, drop of water and touch, touch my tongue, tongue. Because, because he was in the flames of torment. torment. If one, one drip, drip of water would soothe him where he was at, at it's, it's a place, place we don't want to be at. at. Amen. It's, it's a, a place, place that we don't want our loved ones at. Amen. Amen. We, we need to have that picture of that. that. And, and, and that, that stuck, stuck with me. And it, it, it's, it's just amazed me. The difference from hell to where we're going. Where, where it's full of air. It's full of all the good things of peace and holiness and joy in everything where we will be headed because God is there. In everything we don't know about God, we will have. Everything we have not seen, we will see. Everything that you don't know, you will know. 
Just, Just think, think about, about that. Hell, hell is a real, real place. place. I know, I know we, we use it in words sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes people, people tell you to go to hell. hell. But if, if you, you knew, knew how bad that, that place was, you would never say that. that. We're, we're also talking, talking about faith. faith. You know, you know we, we say we have faith in God until something happens within our life. And then, and then our, our faith, faith goes, goes out the door. door. And we, we start, start lacking faith. faith. We, we don't, don't believe God, God can do what he can do. If there's something, something else I read, read and you guys probably heard, heard it before, but there, there was this lady praying outside in her yard, yard, and she had a neighbor that overheard what she prayed. And she said, Father, I don't have much. Would you please fill my cabinets with food in my refrigerator? I don't have much. But I believe you will do it. And she prayed that. Well, well, her, her neighbor, neighbor was an atheist. atheist. And, and as an atheist, he thought he would play, play a joke. So, so he, he drives, drives down, down to the grocery store, buys all this stuff, and he puts it on her door and knocks on the door and hides. And she opens the door and all the stuff she prayed for there, and she said, Jesus, you did it. Jesus, you did it. Jesus, you did it. And this guy couldn't take it no more, and he comes out around the corner, and he said, Jesus didn't do anything. He said, there is no God. I am that God. I drove to the store. I paid with my own money. I drove my own car. I put my own gas in there, and I brought this food to you. And she raised her hands again and said, Jesus, you did it. Jesus, you did it. Jesus, you did it, and you sent the devil to do it. And I just love that because there's a lack of faith in this sometimes. Even, Even though, though he, he said, said he did it, she still believed God did it. And since the devil would do it, but the food was in front of her door, wasn't it? And she, she was going to be fed. No matter how we got there, she didn't care. All she cared was, Jesus, she did it. And I think sometimes we forget about our faith in God. When he says he will do it, he will do it. I think we don't believe that he can do what he says. Today, in this day of age, we see much, so much around us of corruption evil doing, but my God still reigns. He is still God today, yesterday, and forever. For he is the Lord and he changes not, he will not change. He cannot lie, he will not lie. If he said it, it will happen. We have to believe that. We ask in prayer, believe he will do it in prayer. Sometimes it might be no, but take it. My Lord knows what he's doing, and he knows what you need, and he knows what you're doing, and sometimes it's not pleasing to him. But guess what? My Lord still loves you. That's the thing that's hard for me to grab. We say something about each other, we get offended. Think of the things we say about God sometimes, the things that we do to him, the way we act, the way we do how we treat other people. But yet God is always there for us. He'll never leave us and never forsake us. The Lord has been putting on my heart lately in the messages that the character of a believer basically is what he has given over the weeks. And as I was preparing for this week, it was like, Lord, what now? And he took, took me to, to Luke, Luke 6, chap, I mean, verse 45. Chapter 6, verse 45. Luke 6. Luke 6. It says in verse 45, A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth that which is good. I understand that. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. Listen to this. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Think about that. Out of the abundance of his heart his mouth speaks. His mouth speaketh. The mouth betrays your heart. I want you to know that. I want to say that again. Your mouth will betray your heart. Because, because out of the abundance of that we say things we ought not to say sometimes, sometimes. especially when, when we're mad, when we, we have anger. 
Well, when, when something, something hasn't, hasn't gone, gone our, our way, way, we say things, things we ought not, not to say. If you, you think, think about, about how powerful words are, just, just think, think about, about that. that. Again, Again our, our mouth betrays our heart. heart. I'd say, I'd say if, if we, we could, could take, take back, back things, things we said yesterday, how many of us would take back some of the things, things we said? If, if we, we said, said something or typed something or been something, something that we shouldn't have done, I guarantee you we'd take it back. If we, we said, said, Lord, why don't you do this? That, that person over there, why can't they be more like you? Oh, why can't they be more holy? Sometimes, Sometimes we need to look, look in the mirror, mirror don't we? we? And stop, stop looking, looking on the outside. outside. You, you know, know the Bible, Bible tells us that you are to study to be quiet. In Thessalonians, it says it tells you to study to be quiet. Less of this and more of this. God has given you two of these. One of these means to listen twice as much as you speak. This, this one, one right, right here, when I was reading this, I was saying, man, Lord, I'm the character. I'm the one that likes to make everybody happy. I, I don't go out to make people sad. I love to talk to people. I love to pick on the grandkids. But are there things I say that I shouldn't say? Probably. And I have to take them back, and I have to repent, and I have to ask forgiveness. Because we get into ourselves sometimes not realizing what we're saying. We don't, we don't know, know who, who we're damaging, damaging or who, who we're uplifting. So lest we say, that's why the Bible says study to be quiet. That, that means quiet means to hold your peace, to keep still, to live a quiet life, to mind your own business. Did you hear what I just said? To keep still. How many times the Bible says to wait upon me? That's to keep still. James 3, 9 says this. James chapter 3, verse 9 says, Therefore, or therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men. Which are made after the likeness of God. We curse the men. We say bad things about people around us, about our friends, non-friends, people we see at work, people we see at school, people that we don't like, people that we do like. Verse 21, I mean, verse 10 says this, Out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursing. My brother, these things ought not be. James is telling you just as it is. Your, your mouth can't be blessing God one moment and cursing a man the next moment. I've, I've heard so many times, times you know, when the husband and wife leave church, they, they fight, fight when they get, get in the car, car but they're, they're in here filled with the Holy Spirit, Spirit saying they're filled with the Holy Spirit, Spirit lifting their hands and praying in an unknown tongue. tongue. They, they say, say, I'm full of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And they walk out the doors and they're full of the devil. It ought not be. Either, Either you're, you're full, full of the Spirit or you're not. There isn't is two that come out of the water. See, See a faucet, faucet cannot give you salt, salt water and fresh water at the same time. You're, you're only going to get one. one. And this, this is, is what James is saying. That's, That's why in Proverbs, the son of David, Solomon, wrote this, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Cursing and blessings are in the life of the tongue. You can bring life to somebody by sharing the gospel. You can lift someone up by edifying them. Or you can curse them and bring them down and say mean things when you're mad. How many of you ever said something mad and don't want to take it back after you said it? I mean, I mean, we, we say, say it. It's, it's nature, nature we say it. No, my Bible, Bible says it, it ought not, not to be. So, so is God, God a liar or are we a liar? We, we are. are. Amen. Amen. You, you know, know from, from the, the tongue, tongue both good and evil comes, comes to a man. man. If, if it be good, there is nothing better. better. If, if it's, it's bad, bad, there's nothing, nothing worse. worse. And I, I think, think we've all been there. there. Our, Our anger will make, make us say things we don't want to say, but we want to hurt somebody, and that's, that's why, why we say it. it. 
We always, always want, want to give back the last word. And we, I, mean, I think, think we've all been there. I just, just got one, one more thing, thing to say, but my Bible, Bible says to be quiet. quiet. We, we need, need to learn to be more quiet. quiet. And, and, and this, this is, is a message from the man standing right here more than, more than anybody out there. Because I, I love to talk. talk. I, I love to share the gospel. gospel. I love to talk, talk about the Bible. I just like to be the man, the joker that I am. But there's things I ought not say. You know, know, I'd rather rather say and edify edify people, people, you're doing doing a good good job, than than saying you're lousy. lousy. You will make it, than saying, hey, it's a long road. road. Those Those are the things things we need to learn and and tell each each other. other. Just Just because because we don't don't like the way a person person acts, why should we say say something to hurt them? them? That's what Jesus is saying here. In Psalm 37, verse 30, Psalms 37, verse 30, it says this. The mouth of the righteous. You hear me? The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. I think we all want to speak wisdom, amen? And his tongue talketh of judgment. And his tongue talketh of judgment. Utters only that what is morally right and is in accordance to the truth and goodness of the gospel. That's, That's the judgment, judgment my tongue, tongue should speak. It's, it's the, the judgment, judgment of the word of God. The beautiful gospel. Verse 31, the next verse, it says, The law of his God is in his heart. And listen to this. And listen to this. And none of his steps shall slide. My Bible is telling me my feet should slip or slide. <laughs> do, do I believe, I believe that? that? We, we believe, believe that. that. Question, Question is, is, do we live it? it? See, See that's, that's a different, different story. Because, oh, oh man, I should have said that. that. Oh, oh, I slipped. How many of you said, said I slipped, slipped in, in your, your lifetime? lifetime? <laughs> Come, Come on. on. I, I know, know we, we all have. have. The kids, kids have. You all I slipped. slipped. I should have said that. that. My, My Bible, Bible says your foot shouldn't slip. Interesting, isn't it? In Ephesians 4.29, it says, Let no corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth. None. None. If you're communicating with people, make sure it's righteous. That's wisdom. No, let no corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Wow. When I read this stuff, it's it's like like I look at myself in a mirror and say, oh, Lord, I have fallen so short of who you are. That's That's why I said I wish I could could love Jesus as much as he loves me. You know, know, we 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 all can think think about how we treat each other sometimes, especially our loved ones, ones, because because we're around them all the time. time. Those Those are the ones ones we should speak the best of. And have I fallen short of that? Oh, yeah. But today is a new day, amen? Today is a new day, and God can do wonders in us. I will walk out of here different than I came in, I pray. Hallelujah. The words of the mouth and the tongues, the actions or the steps, between these two, the heart is the center of all. So remember, the mouth betrays the heart. Is your mouth betraying your heart? Here, at work, at home? With, with your, your friends, friends, is your mouth, the, the words, words that come out of it, betraying your heart? Because who, who lives, lives within you? Who lives within you? Who temple are you? Which temple is holy? The temple of God. And then if the Holy Spirit lives in you, which is your temple, then which are you, holy or not? This, this is a tough, tough thing. thing. I was, I was reading, reading this. I'm saying, saying, Lord, help me. That's all I can say, Lord, help me. I'm not bringing condemnation to anybody today. There might be a little conviction to one or two in here, or maybe all. But I guarantee you, a little conviction will make us better. Amen? It will. Psalms 40, verse 8 says, I delight to do the will of my God. 
How many woke up this morning and says, I delight to do the will of God, and I want to do his will and his will only today. Help my feet to be in your steps, Father. Guide me, lead me, and speak through me. We forget all these little prayers, don't we? We just go our merry little way. I delight to do thy will, O God. Yea, thy law, thy law, thy law is within my heart. The law of God is in his heart. His, His written, written word is within your, your heart. Everyone, Everyone out here has, has a written, written word of God in your heart. heart. According, According to Deuteronomy 6.6, 6, 6, it says, And these words which I command these days shall be in thy heart. Deuteronomy 6.6 6, 6, will be in thy heart. The Holy Spirit writes it in our hearts. This, this in Hebrew 8.10 8, says, says this, For, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds, and I will write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be unto me a people. Hallelujah. Amen. We are his children because he has written his word within our hearts. I think it's a blessing. If, if it's, it's written, written within, within your, your heart, how come, come it doesn't come out, out of your mouth? mouth? Remember, Remember, the mouth betrays the heart. Now, now it makes sense. Second Corinthians 3.3 3 3 says this, For as much as you are manifested, declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not with the tables of stone, but with fleshly tables of the heart. Our interbeing, our heart, our will, our soul has the written word of the Most High God in us. We have the living God living within us, and we have his words within us. My question to myself is, why not his words come out more often? Why does not that love come more often? Why does not that edification come out more often? If he's in there and he's written on my heart and his word cannot lie, then his truth is within me. But again, I will say, our mouth will defile our heart. We will close it up. Remember the story about the two dogs, the little puppies? How many of you ever heard that little story of the white puppy and the black puppy? Yeah. You, you put, put them, them inside, inside you. you. And which, which one you feed the most will grow the biggest and overtake the other. If you feed the light, you'll be full of light. And it will overtake any darkness in you. And what comes out of you will be edification. But if you feed the dark puppy, it will overtake the light. And junk will come out of you. It's who you feed the most. And who, and who you, you give, give your, your heart, heart to the most will take, take over who you are because you allow God to come out of you full of light, full of breath, full of as the comforter. We will be all in all. Amen? Psalms verse 40, verse 9 says this. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. I wish every pastor today in this valley, in San Maria Valley, in all churches today, that they would preach the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And don't, and don't defile his name, don't defile, don't defile his word. If, if Jesus said it, so be it. it. Amen? If, if he's, he's displeased with it, we should be displeased with it. Remember the Bible says there are six things that the Lord hates and the seventh is abomination. A proud look. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. Feet that are swift to move to mischief. Or a, or a heart, heart that defies wicked imaginations. A heart that defies wicked imagination. And a false witness that will spread lies. And the last one is an abomination to him that he detests to hate. They that sow discord among the brothers. Those that will speak less of a brother or sister around you. Because, because they're not living up to your expectations, we have to say something about them. We, we do, do not need to judge anybody within the body. 
about their salvation. If their character is off, then we need to warn them. But we do it in love. Amen? Go back to the well where Jesus talked to the lady at the well. And get that picture of that, how Jesus treated a lady that's been married six times or five times in the six months she's living with. Jesus never did condemn her. He was, he was just, just trying to listen. listen. Do, you Do you know, know who's here? I am the one that can give you life. I am the water of life. I will give you this water and you'll never thirst again. And she questioned him. How can that be? And why are you even talking to me knowing I'm a Samaritan? I'm half Jew, half whatever. You know, my, this well has come from Jacob. You, you say, say we have to worship God in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Jesus, Jesus said there will be a day you won't have to worship him there. You can, can worship him anywhere. anywhere. And, and he, he told, told her to go and tell thy husband. husband. She, she, has, has, she goes, I have no husband. He goes, he goes you you're right, right Mr. You've had five of them, and the one you're living with now is not your husband. Go tell them that you got a wife. I learned, I learned a lot through that. that. He, he didn't, didn't condemn, condemn her for having five husbands and what she was doing living with the person. person. She, she said, go tell them now that you have life. And you have it more abundantly. And it's the flow out of you. See, See that's, that's the love of Christ bringing himself to a lost person. person. He didn't condemn her or say she didn't know right from wrong. She might have been taught. We know that. We know right from wrong as we've been taught. But we, we like, like to condemn, condemn those that don't know Christ more than we do the ones that know Christ. If they don't know Christ, why do you try to make them look like the light? Give them the light. So the light can take the darkness out of them. That's called sharing the gospel. Amen. Go to the next verse. Um, Psalms 40, verse 9. He said, or a that, that says, says, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I will preach in a great congregation. Whenever I get that chance, I'm going to say how good God is. Verse 10, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Today, Today, pastors, pastors need, to need to open that and, and read that and see, see if they're, they're preaching the uncompromised word of God. You, you are, are not to withheld anything that's righteous. righteous. You, need you need to speak of the love of God in his body. body. You, you need, need to proclaim it, it but you, you need, need to talk about his righteousness. righteousness. Amen. We're, we're not, not called, called into unholiness. We're called to what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Psalm 71, verse 15 says, My mouth shall show out, pour out forth thy righteousness and thy salvation in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night time, or just when I feel like it. You know what the Bible says? If you guys are reading that, anybody reading that? It says, It shall do what? All the day. For, For I, I know, know not the, the numbers, numbers thereof. All day long we're to pour out Christ. Verse, I mean, Psalm 71, verse 8 says, Let my mouth be filled with thy praises and with thy honor all the day. All the day we need to praise him. When we're doing that, we don't give a chance for the devil to come in and give us a lying tongue, an anger tongue, and a mouth that speaks unright, unrighteousness to people. Because, because all day long we're speaking about his righteousness. Oh, Lord, let, let us be there. there. 71 verse 16 says this, Psalm 71 verse 16, I will go into the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah. I need to hear that more often. How are you going? I'm going in the strength of the Lord. I'm going in his strength. Wow. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thy only. Only God will I speak of. Verse 17, O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. That's why it is great to stand up here and share your testimony, because you are sharing the works of the mighty God. You are showing that now darkness has become light. 
You are showing how he has taken you from one place to the next. How you were born again in corruptible sea, but now it's incorruptible. That's what we're looking at, the righteousness of who God has called you. That's, That's why, why we're to share, share our testimony, testimony to the lost and to the saved, to, to give us all hope. That's, That's why, why I'm big on showing tes tes terrible testimonies in here. Because, because you, you don't, don't know who's watching, watching. you don't know who's listening, you don't know who you're, you're touching, touching. But, but you, you are, are touching someone, someone because God's, God's word will not come back void. Amen. Amen. If, if you speak, speak about Jesus, I guarantee you there's someone out there that's getting saved. It is changing, changing someone's life. life. You, you might not see it in your lifetime, lifetime but guarantee me it's, it's happening. It's happening. It's powerful. Verse 18 says, Now also when I am old and gray hair, which I'm there now, the gray hair has came. It says, When I am gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not until I have showed thy strength unto his generation, and then power and thy power to everyone that is to come. I don't care how old I am, if I'm on my dying breath, last dying breath, Lord, let me still uphold who you are. We get sick and we get ill, we start crying. Instead of speaking, how good God is. He will, he will get, get you through it, and he, he will, will make sure you come through it. If it's, it's not your time, time to leave, people, you will not leave. So many of us wanted to die one or two times in our life. It's not God's time, so do not do it. Don't be selfish. God will tell you when it's your day to come home. And until that day, you get out there and you preach his gospel to the lost. You have a calling, you have something to give, and it's called the light of the gospel. You have, have life, life because, because it's in the power of your tongue to give life. life. If, if you, you hold, hold your tongue, the gospel, then you're given to death. death. That's, That's why we're to preach. Proverbs 10:20 10, 20 says, says this: the tongue of the just is as choice silver; the heart of the wicked is a little worth. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Boy, Boy you're, you're, you're silver, silver, choice silver. silver. But well, boy, boy, you're, you're wicked, wicked, you're, you're worthless. worthless. Your, Your tongue, tongue is, is worthless. worthless. Why, why, why do I need to listen to you? you? You're, you're worthless. worthless. Wow. wow. Psalms 12.6 12, 6 says this. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth. And it is purified seven times. And then the next verse says, Thou, Lord, you will keep them. Thou, Lord, you will keep them from this generation forever. Why? Why? Because, because my, my word is settled in heaven. It's forever. It is purified seven times. That's that choice silver. Choice silver. You know what choice silver does? What is choice silver? You know how they get pure silver? Does anybody know? Seven times. They take it and they heat it up and they purify it and all this stuff called dross or dross will come, come, to, the come to the top. The impurities. And it will come, come up and it will be crud and black and stuff and they'll wipe it away. And they'll throw it out. And they'll go down and they'll heat that stuff up again and that's what comes out of that silver. A little fire in our life gets rid of the impurities. Did you hear me? Nobody wants to hear that, amen? We're tried by fire. It does that seven times. They say you know it's choice silver when that last wipe away, it's like a mirror and you can see your reflection in it. Well, well, what, what we're supposed, supposed to see in it is the face of Christ because what's in it is supposed to reflect out of us. Did you hear, hear what I just said? That's, that's what, what it's talking, talking about there. there. Psalms, Psalms 12, 6, 6 that's, that's what that is. is. Seven, Seven times, times to ensure the highest possible degree of purity. purity. That's what that means. The highest degree of purity. purity. If, if we, we could, could be God-like God in our conversations, conversations we must, we must watch, watch our language, language. And, maintain and maintain the strictest purity of integrity and holiness in all of our communications, if we, we want to be godlike. This, this, this is as, this is as it were a, in, in a burning furnace, furnace and, and with a design to try our sincerity and to purge the dots out of our hearts and the wicked among us. 
This is what we're talking about today. Get some of that wickedness out of our hearts and that mean stuff we say and that way we act. Lord, Lord fill, fill it more with love. love. Amen. Amen. Oh, well, you, you want to kick through the tulips? No, no, I don't. I want to be like Christ and walk in his resurrection power and learn what love truly means. I've, I've never, never seen him condemn a leper. I didn't see him go up to someone that was a leprosy and said, oh, your sin made you that way. He went up and he touched him and cleansed him and said, sin no more. Go show the priest and get what's in heart. He didn't, he didn't go, go up, up to, to the, the girl, girl that was caught in adultery in the act of it at that time. He didn't cast it. He says, what? Sin no more. Your sins have been forgiven. He didn't talk about the guy she was with because it's her to stand in his presence. See, we want to say, my daughter may be good, my, my husband, husband made me do it. My, my wife, wife made me do it. My kids made me do it. Go read Psalms 51. You never heard once where David repented and said, Bathsheba made me do it. He says, me and I alone have sinned against you, Lord. It's me alone standing in the presence of God. You will have to give an account of yourself. Not, not someone, someone to the left, left and not, not someone, someone to the right or forward or behind you. It's you and God alone you have to give an account. You, you cannot, cannot blame anybody else because of your actions. actions. Your, your actions are made by who you have within you. That's, That's your, your actions. actions. <clears throat> Proverbs 10.21 says, says, The lip of the righteous feeds many, but the fools die of want of wisdom. Of want, want of wisdom. The wise guide guys only others to safety, but the fool, empty headed, empty hearted, involves others like himself in destruction. They're empty hearted, or empty headed. Do you hear what I say? But if you're full of God, you're going to give him wisdom. Doing good on time. Praise, Praise God. God. In, in Colossians, Colossians 4, 5, 5 and 4, 4 6, 6, I love I these verses. verses. It, it says, says, walk in wisdom towards those that are without. Those that are without Christ. We are to walk in wisdom. And we found out what wisdom is, is to have the righteousness of God in your heart. To speak righteousness. It says, redeem in the time, verse 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt that you may know how you should ought to answer every man. Our speech should be with grace. How many of us speak with grace? You see my point? Lord, we need help. Sometimes we need just to say, Lord, I need help. I need help. You know, is a season with salt? <clears throat> How many of you ever take a fish that doesn't, doesn't have no season on it? Take a bite in it. it. Says sushi. You've got you to have, have some salt on it. Because it, it makes it taste better. better. Doesn't, doesn't it? Doesn't seasoning make, make food taste, taste better? better? You know, you know a fish, fish is a perfect, perfect example of how, how we are to be in this world. world. It's, it's a, a funny, funny thing. A fish lives in what? Salt water. water. It sucks, it sucks in that salt, salt water all day long. It lives in that salt, salt water all day long. And it, it goes through its gills all day long. But, but when you cut it open and eat it, guess what you got to put on it? Salt. It's, it's not, not part, part of the salty, salty world, world that it lives in. It, it is who God has called it to be without the salt. But yet it lives within it. it. The same thing as you and I live in this world, but we're not spotted by this world. We, we can, can allow Christ, Christ to come out of our mouth. Well, I'm embarrassed. I might lose a friend. I might lose some friends if I speak about Jesus. You know, you know I want to be bold. bold. I'm going to tell, tell you what you're going to lose. You're going to lose a ticket to hell. hell. How, How about, about that? that? That's bold. Don't, don't, be, a, don't be offended of who Jesus and what he is in you. Well, they, they might not like me. They wouldn't like you anyways. With Christ or without Christ. Because with, with Christ, you're showing them love. love. Without Christ, Christ you're showing them what they want to hear. Be, be who you are called to be in Jesus Christ. 
Why am I not supposed to offend anybody? You just speak in love about Jesus offends that everybody today. From the government down, they don't want Bibles in the school, they don't want the Ten Commandments. I am in a state of befuddlement when I listen to that. I ask him, why would you take out these simple words? Thou shalt not lie. Well, we see it now. That's why they don't want it in there. Thou shalt not murder. Look at what's going around us. Not just with their tongue they're murdering, but they're murdering everybody around them. They don't like what they're doing. Thou shalt not commit, commit adultery. adultery. I can, I can see, see why you would take, take that, that down because when you're walking in and you see that up there and you're breaking most of them, them it's, it's better, better to say, hey, let's, let's take that, that down so I don't, don't have to see it. it. But that, that doesn't, doesn't make it go away. away. It's, it's still, still God's, God's law and it's written in here. We should know better. I want to give a couple of quotes and we'll close this. Now listen to these quotes because they're not what they are, quotes. It says, says, the tongue has no bones, but is strong enough to break a heart. So be careful with your words. Kids, did you hear me? The tongue has no bones. It has no bones, but it's strong enough to break a heart. It's strong enough to break a heart. It's better to the bite your tongue than to... It's better, I'm sorry, it's better to bite your tongue than to eat your words. Did you hear what I said? It's better to bite your tongue than to eat your words. In other words, be quiet and locked. A, a sharp tongue and a dull mind are usually found in the same head. I love that one when I heard that. Talk with your mind before you talk with your tongue. Talk with your mind before you speak with your tongue. I guarantee you, men, we would be in less trouble with the whites if we would learn to say it here first. <laughs> Come on, I didn't hear a big amen on that one. If we could speak with our minds and we could with our tongues, we would say less harmful things. As a rudder steers a ship, the tongue steers your life. Watch your the words of the tongue should, should have three gatekeepers. Your tongue shall have three gatekeepers. Listen. Is it true? Is it kind? And is it necessary? This is your gatekeeper of your tongue. Before you speak, ask yourself, is it true? Is it kind? And really, what you have to say, is it necessary? Is it necessary? The, the true test of a man's spirituality is not in his ability to speak, as we are apt to think, but rather his ability to bridle his tongue. Words are powerful, and they have a strong impact on others. Believe me, that is so true. Your words are powerful, and it will have a strong impact on others. That's, That's why, why you tell, tell your kids you love them. That's, That's why you encourage them they can do it. Can you will be there. You can do it. You can do it. If you fail today, don't worry about it. There's a tomorrow. We will, will try harder. harder. You will make it. You will be there. Encourage, encourage them. them. Amen. Amen. But, but rather, rather his ability to bridle his, his tongue. tongue. Wow. wow. We, we can, can use it in a positive or negative way to impact others. Our, Our thoughts and feelings are expressions through words. Did you hear me? Our thoughts and our expressions are through our words. What we say and how we say it can make a big difference in someone's life. Your words can either speak life or your words can speak death. Our, Our tongues, tongues can, can build, build up others, and they, they can, can tear, tear them down. A, a unchecked fire doubles in size every minute. Just, Just think, think about, about that. James, James talks about our tongue being like a fire. 
It doubles. Every minute you leave it unchecked, it doubles and doubles and doubles. Check, Check your tone. tone. The, the quieter you become, become listen to this, kids, grown-ups, everybody in here, the quieter you become, the more you can hear. The quieter you become, the more you can hear. The tongue is a small thing, but what enormous damage it can do. I'll finish with James 1.19. Wherefore, my beloved brother, let, Let every man be swift, swift to hear and, and slow to speak, slow to wrath. We, we read often, he, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear, but, but never he that has a tongue to speak, let him speak. You never read that. You read it all through the Bible. You have an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit has to say. Amen. You have an ear, Jesus said, Verily, I say to you, he that heareth my words, heareth my words, heareth my words, heareth my words, heareth my words and believe on him that has sent me has everlasting life. You have passed from death and from condemnation, and you have passed from death unto life. Think about that. You have passed from death unto life because you heard his words. You can hear more if you speak less. What, what we, we can, can hear, hear if we, we just listen. listen. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Father, Father I, thank I thank you for your word. I, I know it was pretty tough, tough for me because it's the place that I need to give my tongue more to you, Father. Help me to study and be quieter. Only to speak the righteousness of your son, Jesus, to edify people around me. I pray for everybody in here that would have gave an ear to your tongue word today, today that they would take heed to it. It, it wasn't, wasn't a backlashing, Father. It was, it was something to help us to walk more like you want us to walk. You said that we want to be like you, to we're even to walk as you walk. So I pray, Father, this teaching, this word that you gave me, help us to live it as we leave today. Help us to concentrate on what we say. Help us to think before we speak, Father. I pray that for everyone in here. And bless them, Father, that will hear your word and keep it. Those that keep it and will live it, Father, bless them abundantly. Thank you for giving this place that we can come and call a refuge, that we can get edified and lift up, Father, and learn what you want us to learn, to be a better person within this world. Be more like your son, Jesus. I pray that for everyone in here. And we all say Amen. Amen. Bless, Bless you guys. guys. Bless, Bless you guys. guys. I, will I will say, say if, if anybody's, anybody's concerned. concerned.